This is the BMW iX1, and it's one of BMW's entry-level all-electric cars. And we're gonna go through it in detail today. So we're gonna go through the exterior, the interior, the rear seats, multimedia system, and most importantly, what it's like to drive. So let's start out on the exterior first. Now, I've got to say, I personally, I'm not a huge fan of boxy cars, you know, the kind of square boxy shape of some SUVs and things like that. I do like, personally, a bit of curvature in the, uh, in the car's bodywork, but there's something about this car that I really, really like. And I, I think I've either put it down to the styling of the lower bumper just here, or even the kind of 3D styled lights, which look really, really cool, actually, especially at the rear, which I'll show you in a second. But um, yeah, it, there's something about it that I, I just really, really like. And of course, it's a really, really practical car as well, being uh, extremely similar to the BMW X1. Uh, so that's the uh, petrol, diesel, and plug-in hybrid versions. Of course, this being the electric version. So we'll get onto the boot and the rear seats and kind of things like that in a second. But first, the dimensions of the car. So when it comes to the length, it's about 4,500 millimetres, width 2,104 millimetres, and the height 1,642. So still, it's a pretty small SUV in terms of how big SUVs can actually go, so it's actually quite easy to park and should be able to fit in most garages. But of course, dimensions there for you to just double check. So let's have a look at these, uh, these lights on the rear. Now guys, these lights here are the bits that I was talking about. So with most car manufacturers, what I have seen, they kind of have, well, kind of rounded off uh, light housings at the rear. So uh, kind of on the side here, it will look a bit like that. But in this particular car, it's kind of got this like 3D look to it. So it's kind of like taken away from the bodywork a bit. And I actually really like it because I think it would look a bit odd if it didn't have it. Um, but it certainly just helps with that, especially down the line of the middle of the car here. It kind of meets with it and then finishes off on the back. So I really, I really dig the 3D look on the back. So um, let's have a look at the uh, boot. Now, yes, when it comes to the boot, uh, number one, it's electric, which is uh, really, really good to see, which I think all SUVs should have, to be honest. Um, as it stands at the moment, it's 490 litres without all my stuff here. So uh, we'll show you what it's like without all that, just because I'm out on the road at the moment. Now, it does actually look smaller than it is. I think it's because of this parcel shelf, because it's quite a large parcel shelf and quite a large boot. It's kind of segregated into two sections. So you've kind of got this like flat bit here and then this bit that actually raises up. But of course, you can take it out and then you've got loads of space. And there's even space underneath the boot as well, uh, which is obviously quite useful to put the charging cables, uh, which is where they are at the moment. So that's the boots, 490 litres, very, very good. Let's have a look at the rear seat. So guys, one of the most important aspects of uh, an SUV, uh, especially for growing families and that sort of thing, is of course the rear seats. So as is customary with all my videos, I always set this seat up for my driving position and then I sit behind myself. Now, two things. Number one, this is an EV. Uh, so the battery is actually located under the floor, which means the floor has been raised slightly. And number two, personal issue, <laughs> I have long legs. So um, basically uh, you'll see this part of my leg here is actually kind of going up and then straight down, but I naturally have long legs anyway. So that's gonna be a bit more kind of uh, over-exaggerated on video, but sadly that's just, that's just my legs. Uh, but yes, the floor is raised ever so slightly, but I wouldn't say it's too much. I could certainly do a long journey in the back of here, no issue. And well, yeah, there's there's enough leg room for, for me to sit behind myself. So uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, in terms of uh, the middle, uh, yeah, we've got armrest here, cup holders. Now, actually, I do like this position of the cup holders because some car manufacturers put them right in the middle. And that is where your kind of elbow sticks and then you kind of have your elbow go down and then it hurts but actually it's further forward because you're not going to sit there like that so yeah it's good that it's uh, further forward so uh, that's good to see um, i didn't mention as well um, you can actually adjust the angle of the backrests of the seats so like a little black tab here so you can do uh probably about there is as far forward as it goes so obviously you wouldn't sit like that but that's more if you need more boot space but if you need to do half and half, you can you can kind of do half and half and have it slightly further forward. And that's as far back as it goes like that. So yeah. Uh, and then down here, we've of course got the uh, USB-C ports and uh, vents for the for the rear passengers. And of course, uh, nets on the back of the seats. So uh, yeah, I could quite easily do a road trip in here. And um, that's probably for some accessories um, for like, uh, I'd imagine you could probably like buy a net or something and, um, like a cargo net to put here or something, probably something similar. 
So, let's have a look at the front. So guys, for starts, well, I did say we'd have a look at the kind of interior. Now, there are a few options, which is quite good for interior colours. So um, I'll put them up on screen here as you can see. This one is, of course, the light interior. Not my personal preference, just because I, I personally prefer a, a black interior. But um, hey, it's nice to see that there's an option that, um, you know, you can go for a light interior if you, if you wanted to. So, up front here. Now... The showstopper, of course, in this car is this gorgeous screen that goes across here. So quite a few car manufacturers are doing this um, kind of at the moment. And I'm a huge fan of it, really, because you kind of take car design, go back a few years and they kind of were like orange calculator displays almost. But um, yeah, now they're just digital experiences. And there's so many cool things that car manufacturers do now to just make stuff really cool on the inside. So, for example, if you turn this car on, It's electric, of course, completely silent, but you do get some cool sound effects. Yes, of course, um, gear stick is actually in the middle along with the start stop button. So that's literally just down here. Quite simply, you've kind of got uh, reverse drive and there's also a park button here. Really, really cool with quite a few German manufacturers. There's an auto hold feature. So you can enable this and basically when you come to a stop, it won't creep forward. So super super easy and there's other various buttons down here as well with um, different driving modes volume next track button previous track button that sort of thing and uh, of course then there's a, a camera view so you can clearly see everything all around you which is uh, pretty neat but uh, maybe more on that in another video so yeah camera systems parking sensors of course specs can vary so obviously double check with your local bmw and they can let you know what's uh, what's available on the car you're looking at so that's that uh kind of let's cover storage so um in this area here there's a button which opens this way and um a, quite a small storage area but i'm not sure what you put in there but hey always good to have some kind of storage so um that's that bit there the larger bit is underneath so that is very kind of uh, large you can obviously put loads of uh cool things under there usb-c ports just down here um, so that's obviously for charging uh, modern phones and that sort of thing. But just in case you don't have a USB-C cable or anything like that, I'll leave a, um, a link for a dongle that you can get that'll convert it to USB-C just in case you want to keep your own cables. Uh, wireless charging in here I've noticed as well, which is quite handy. So I've been charging my phone on the way here and uh, nice cup holders here. So it's quite an open design and I quite like this because normally it's quite kind of built in here in terms of design of a car but um, yeah they kind of kept this like really open just to give it a really spacey feeling and of course the light interior and the uh, the sunroof does help so all that's really good let's have a look at the multimedia system now the multimedia system is actually all touchscreen so it's operated by literally just tapping on the relevant thing you want to go to and it'll change and the way i've kind of seen this from using this for the past few days is that bmw have kind of opted for they're almost like tiles or apps to go in to do things so of course you have your usual kind of things over here on the right hand side like media or telephone or or the navigation but if you go to the um the menu button that i just did uh, just on the top here this will show you all the different kind of things you can go into to change or access so things like connecting your phone or or spotify or Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, um, of course, navigation's there as well as there. Your quick access thing's there. But all the other stuff is in all, all of these tiles here. And just to make it even easier, you can even just go for infotainment stuff or car stuff. So I quite like that kind of thing on the left there. You can kind of choose. So accessing the climate control, super easy. It is on the bottom here. So once you've tapped this, it'll load up on the screen just like this. To actually switch it all, it's actually on the top left-hand side. So as soon as you flick this button on, that'll turn on all the climate control and you'll hear it come on any second. Oh, there we go. And um, of course, then you've got varying adjustments either side. And um, when you're, say, you're using the sat-nav, you can easily then control the climate control just along the bottom. So nice and easy. Of course, then to switch it off, just go back in the menu, toggle it off, then back to normal. So yes, yeah, so I won't go into too much detail on this uh, multimedia system. I would like to, of course, maybe cover it in the future. So guys, let me know if you want me to cover the uh, kind of multimedia system in BMW just in the future. But this is the latest version, which is um, really cool. So there's quite a few 
nifty little things I've seen on here, like automations and things that I've seen, which uh, might be quite uh, cool to see how they all work. But yeah, guys, obviously let me know if you uh, want me to cover some more topics like that in the future. Now, in terms of build quality on uh, the RX1, now, of course, it's a German car, so it's going to be really, really good. And being electric, there's no noise from up front. So BMW, of course, have to work on making it as you know acoustically quiet as possible so you don't hear anything. And you really do feel it on the road. So we'll go for a drive in a minute. But um, yeah, in terms of build quality, I said all these nice squidging materials everywhere. Steering wheel is nice and soft as well. You can kind of, it's got a kind of like squidgy feel to it. And personal favorite, these kind of like indents just here, kind of where I like to grab the steering wheel. Really nice. Seats are nice and comfy as well. So all around, really, really good. So what's it like to drive? So guys, what's it like to drive? Well, I've got to say I am super impressed. Uh, I mentioned at the start of the video that I've, um, you know, I've been using this for just under a week now. I wanted to save this video for the end because um, uh, that way I can kind of give my honest thoughts on it. And um, I will say from the exterior from a first glance, it does look quite like a big car, but actually I'm going down these very narrow country roads at the moment and it doesn't feel big. Um, it certainly is obviously one of the smaller SUVs that um, that BMW do. But yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of it actually. It's very very practical. Uh, as I said I probably wouldn't have the light interior, but even still, it's still pretty good. Now of course there are loads of technical aspects to this which I will cover in a minute. But one thing I wanted to mention is as this is an electric car, BMW actually do some synthesized sounds because obviously it's. Um, fully electric the electric motors don't actually make any sounds or anything so they've actually synthesized some sounds so that when you go to accelerate you kind of hear it on the uh, on the inside yep there's one bit of it but there's also a sport mode as well and a boost mode so um, we'll uh, we'll show you what they look like now so we'll put this into sport mode, and then there's also a boost mode as well. Right, let's uh, see what it looks like on this bit here. So, boost. Oh, that pull! That is 330 horses right there. I want this car. Sounds like a spaceship, I love it. Oh, that definitely puts a smile on your face. Now, not all electric cars have that kind of sound. Um, now, I'm sure there's probably an option to turn it off, but I do quite like it. It's just, you don't need to use that power all the time. And certainly when you drive it normally, should I say, you'll, um, you won't really hear it that much. It's mainly when you put your foot down. You know, just kind of like if you have like a V6 or a V8, um, normally um, you won't hear it too much, but if you put your foot down, you will. So yeah, I quite like it. Now guys, before I share a couple of things that I noticed over the past week, let's very quickly run through the technical data. So this BMW iX1 features a 64.7 kilowatt hour battery, which boasts a 259 to 270 mile range. Considering this car's performance with 330 horsepower and a boost mode for increased acceleration, it's pretty competitive. Because of the boost mode, it's not to 62 miles an hour time is a staggering 5.7 seconds. Charging wise, as with most electric cars, there's options for charging on AC and DC. AC charging at home will always be around seven kilowatts, so that's an overnight charge while you sleep, but its max speed in public via AC is either 11 kilowatts and options up to 22 kilowatts. For the fastest charge, you'll want DC charging, which can receive up to 130 kilowatts, which means it has the capability to charge to 80% in just 29 minutes. Now, yes, guys, while I've been using this actually for the past week, I have picked up some really, really cool things that I, I didn't actually know existed, which I thought were really, really cool. A uh, couple of things that I've observed um, mainly in the past couple of days. Number one, the wireless charger that's here Wireless charging is really great. However, convenience factor, yeah, really good. There is one issue to wireless charging is that it generates heat, and heat is the thing that kills batteries. This is why in cars, especially like this car, it'll be thermally managed by the coolant system. But this wireless charger here, I've heard there's like a fan that comes on to keep the phone cooler, which I think is just such a nice touch. I'm sure there might be other manufacturers that do that, but 
the ones I've had access to previously I haven't seen that so that's a first for me so that's really cool so they care about not only your car's battery they also care about your phone's battery as well uh, another thing I've noticed is this car uh, has quite a few extras on it um, so that's why I haven't gone through the specs too much in this car because um, you know I want this video to appeal to as many people as possible but this does have a thing called a head-up display but I have noticed if I put it into um, efficient the almost like the eco mode the head-up display will actually show you when to take your foot off the accelerator pedal so for example if you're approaching like a roundabout or something like that or there's a car in front it'll actually tell you when to take it off and what speed you need to go to go around that corner the most efficiently which i think is really really cool i've seen some systems before where it tells you to take your foot off but not by how much so yeah really caring about obviously getting the most out of um, your car per charge so yeah all round it's definitely a winner for me definitely absolutely loving the uh, the ride on this um i'm I said I'm always a sucker for the acceleration as well, but I know it's not all about that. But yeah, super smooth across uh, all the bumps and everything. So uh, yeah, really like it. So guys, of course, I'd like to give a shout out to BMW UK, of course, because they helped provide this car for me to make this video. So a uh, huge shout out to them. I uh, really, really enjoyed driving this car actually. So uh, yeah, huge shout out to them. So if you're considering a BMW for your next car, definitely get in touch with your local one and I'm sure the guys there will obviously be able to help you out and uh, advise you on what's, uh, what's the most suitable to go for based on what you're after. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see you then.